Edgeworth's crisis. But why would Edgeworth be bl blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lena Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Yeah, but they're not going to take the fall for someone up high. They're going to pass it down, down the line. Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that, but as you know, they've been uh, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his amazing talent as a prosecutor. But now with this, there are really so many people who hate him. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only had that. But he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making enemies. Hey, Dick. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime. Okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. You mean just fucking suck up to everyone? I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. <laughs> He's not fucking cracking. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned, genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence the Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. Oh. <laughs> Seems Detective Gumtree never realized Emma was a girl. Was the girl? That's when he left the most incriminating evidence after all. Well, what was it? The knife. Oh, um. Let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Jesus, Gumtree. Oh, I forget. The uh, look. It's all written uh, here somewhere in here. Okay. His power of recollection never failed to impress. Maybe we should show the, him the murder weapon. I might jog his memory. Yeah, one second. Calm down. Let's talk about the crime. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just a, your run-of-the-mill businessman. Businessman? Made him t take to serial killing. One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. The kid walked just by <laughs> by just then. He killed him too. A jogger came off the scene and killed him as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Seems he is a pretty careless animal. But of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence, so he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. That makes literally no fucking sense. Why would you turn yourself in only to run away? Nah, 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 this, uh, this is fishy as hell. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but, uh, fortunately he was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that wit last witness wasn't killed. That last witness. He must meet Emma. Jesus, dude, you are awful. No, this is, this is dirty as hell. Um, about this. Hey, don't tell me that's... It has a tag attached to it, with the label I saw that instant on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you found you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. It's just gonna be a fucking knife. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at, and it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it. Inside his own body. 
It was found deep inside the stab wound. Didn't match Dark's knife. You bet, down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Neil's autopsy updated. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't buy it at all. One, it didn't look like it fit, but whatever. Well, there you have it, didn't that show? That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gan. It's not money, but it does conserve the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked, but we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What, really? Well, if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh, wait, do I have Goodman's ID? Yeah, I've just fucking, I'll just use Goodman's ID. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Um... Here, picture. I share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. Oh, I'll keep that in mind. Present. No. I don't know what would make him do it. I've been studying up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edgeworth's presentation. The thing people are accusing him of injustice. I, for one, ain't buying it, pal. You're looking into that case from Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal when it, well, it was going on, you know? After all, Zero Geller was on the loose. Elena was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Dark guilty. Present. I'm gonna fucking just present everything. Maybe the knife? About this. Hey, don't tell me that. Yeah, okay, I already did that. Well, I know it was fucking updated, but I didn't know if it, uh, would change it. Um, ID record. That's ID card record, isn't it? Yes, there's one number left to investigate at 4.20 p.m. The victim, Detective Goodman, must have entered the evidence room along with someone else. Someone with an executive officer number. Seven 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 seven. That's one seven too many, detective. An executive officer. I just might have a hunch. Fuck me. Can I talk with him? No. Ah. Present that. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the awards today, ceremony? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. Can I show this now? No. I'll show you the, what it looks like before it was broken. Okay. I don't think I'm fucking getting anywhere. Autopsy report on Goodman. Jake Marshall, or Neil Marshall, autopsy. Anything new? No. Screwdriver? Yeah. I lost auto report, very impressive detective. You know it was right off the bat. I'm a master of misplacement. Master. That's such a cool ring to it. The way I see it, if things are meant to be lost, then they're meant to be lost. There's a higher power at work here. Ah, oh, higher power. Maybe I shouldn't let him hold any evidence. I got nothing. I got nothing. Detention center. Can I talk with you anymore? Let me present some stuff to you. 
Attorneys and prosecutors have no business in showing evidence out of, inside of court, especially when the interests of both parties are involved. She really means it. Lena. Okay. Is she gonna really just fuck everything here? Yeah. Thanks, Lena. Love you too, babe. Fucking a lot of help. A lot of fucking ground parking lot. Wait, is there anything on this side? No. No. Chief prosecutor's office. Let's see if uh, Edgeworth's in now. Hopefully he is. wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. Hmm, what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Sure, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his true, his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Let's talk the forge evidence, bud. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we'd stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, and my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same, no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep his, uh, this kind of emotion bottled up. Let's talk about tomorrow's trial then, but Are you okay? Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on a trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's why my superiors are banking on it. I never thought that the case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That list of evidence, it seems so too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but at the time there was only one thing on my mind. I'd used the evidence I was given to prove that sus uh, sub suspect guilty. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture. Something seemed strange about it. Oh yeah, he's not in it for one thing. Could you tell us again what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving the awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, yeah, just odds and ends. Clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the Chief asked you to? That's right. Hmm. Very convenient. Tell me about this photo. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief, of, uh, Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall, uh, he had just started making a name for himself. 
Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. See, became back, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding is. It's a little different than yours. Yeah, it's not... fucked. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official prosecutor's uh, uh, prosecutor trophy used until that time. There's a story behind it. A story? Sounds interesting. Do you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Okay. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. Very well. Long in the go, in the kingdom of Ku. Chu? Chu. Let's go Chu. There was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed it could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he could, uh, claimed w could withstand any weapon. But if that halberd can cut through anything, that shield isn't one. One of them works and one doesn't. Hmm. Wait a minute. That's the, char that's the contradiction. Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive, but then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very description of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for con contradiction was born. Fucking- <laughs> I object to your story. Oh, I see, so the chipped shield and the broken knife symbolize. Precisely so, they symbolize the merchant's items. Oh. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's our na in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this. Oh, thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. It's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Why? Doesn't make sense. No, fuck. No, go back. Go back. Objection. objection. I gotta hear objection again, so that's fine, I guess. But that is an that is a very interesting idea, or at least concept of a trophy. Okay, let's get the fuck out of here. Now we should be able to go to see what's his fucking face, Gumshoe. Ah, uh, excuse me. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? A star, I guess she's out on with lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person you sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. You know, that's a fair point. Someone had to just fucking discover it. Yo, these animals sucking on some cow nips. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. But even then, it was god awful. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day of the evidence from the case was due for transfer. This can't be all attri attri attributed to mere coincidence. Are you forgetting something? You know that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lena stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. A star's hatred toward Lena. It all dates back to two years ago. I mean... She's probably jealous of her, to be honest. Joe Dark, that's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was even more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. 
Poor old Jake Marshall, though, must have been doing going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made me... made her all the more desperate. Her? Lena Sky. My sister. The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by the le le that legendary duo. Lena and Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. It see items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. But you didn't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman really, uh, were relieved of our duties, most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lena Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lena always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Lena Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Oh, definitely. I agree with that. Damon Gann and Lena Sky. Two years ago, Gann was chief detective and Lena second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gann's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He'd produce the most incredible evidence in cases he handled. Incredible evidence, you mean. Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Obviously. Back then, everyone looked up to Lena. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated every anything crooked and always watched out for other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infra infuriating. The star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Lena transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lena was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lena? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Stark. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to cre create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. I, I hope so, too. Uh, police department. And we need to go talk to Gumshoe. Hopefully he'll let us in this time. Oh, you're back. You're still here. I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, or pe office period. It'll be my neck on the line. 
That office is the last scene of the crime of the SL9. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Let's present to you the prosecutor's trophy. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Congratulations. I'll clearly read this. Okay. Say, this design's based on an old Chinese proverb, right? Uh, yeah, everyone knows that. There was this, uh, dragon. Yeah, that's it, a dragon. Hit a thing for she don't see. It's not exactly the version we heard. No, but this one sounds more exciting. Anyway, it gets kind of gory after that. I'll spare you the details. Jesus fucking Christ. Buddy. I talk to him. No. Can I talk? How can I present this? Fuck. I can do something with this. about everything. Can't talk to you either. There's gotta be something I can fucking do. Nothing here. <laughs> attorney's badge. Detective, here's my attorney's badge. You show this to me every time we meet, pal. Real men show their police badge, enough said. I wish I had a badge, even an ID card would be nice. Yeah, I'd love it for Blue Badger? This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the blood stain now in that evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. It would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it so well. I have to admit, he's right though. Thanks to that blue badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 515. You can do just about anything these days with a card and secret number. Scary. It's only scary because you keep dropping your card detective down true. I forget my secret number too a lot. I'm scared of myself. Well, I'm me after all, and what could what could be wrong with that? I think I'll stay out of this conversation. About that jar, I think I've seen it somewhere before. Somewhere. Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most uh, uninformative detective I've ever had. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant. Where could I have seen that before? Can I please present you with this damn picture already? Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. I've been looking for a fucking hour. Oh my god. I completely forgot they said he threw a piece of paper on his desk or under the desk. Fuck. wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Ryan, let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is standing right there. Just distract him, I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on, first let me see what that girl's doing crawling on, around my feet. He didn't even look. What? A letter of... 
If you can't read, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, Mr. Wright. I feel as if something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I can use it for anything. 